The Win 3921 scroll saw, it's a 16 inch machine and it's inexpensive, but is it cheap? Ago, I purchased this Win 3921 16 inch variable speed scroll saw off of Amazon. I think I paid like $120 for it and obviously I needed another scroll saw like I needed a hole in my head but I wanted to pick this machine up and just show the differences between an entry level scroll saw and maybe a little more advanced scroll saw. Now I'm not one of those people that will tell you you have to spend $700 to $1000 on a scroll saw to get started in the hobby. It, that's just foolish. There's no reason to do that. You can get started with an entry-level scroll saw. Almost all of us did at one point. And today I just want to show you a little bit of a review on this saw, but also a differences between what to expect from this as compared to a higher-end saw. To get started, let's just talk about the specifications of this machine. Um, it's a 16-inch scroll saw, and what that means is from the blade to the back of the throat right here, is 16 inches. So if your hole is in the center of the board, then you've got this much room to play with to turn the board while you're making the cut. The table itself feels like it's like a cast aluminum and it's 16 inches long and about 10 inches wide and in front of the blade there's about 5 inches. So those are pretty much the dimensions. Uh, it does set on a base that is about nine and a half to ten inches wide and the total length of the saw is about 25 inches. The quality as far as the construction of the machine is adequate. This is not going to be an everyday use saw. You know if you're a production cutter or you're going to cut for craft shows uh, this probably isn't the machine you want to use. Uh, you're it'll work, you're just going to wear it out too quick is the problem. But other than that, these wind tools for being inexpensive tools are generally built pretty well and that's what I'll say about this saw. It is actually not built too bad. The table does tilt 45 degrees. It's variable speed from 550 up to 1600 strokes per minute. Uh, On-off switch in the front does have a dust port uh, collection for your back, uh, shop vac hose right here. The adjustment for the tension is in the back of the saw back here. Um, it comes standard set up to be used as a pin in scroll saw blade. And for those of you who may not be familiar, there's two types of scroll saw blades. Uh, one blade uses pins in each end and that's how they are clamped into the saw. And the other blade is a plain end and it gets clamped with two set screws. Let me zoom in here real close and I'll show you those blades real quick. Most of you are already going to know this information, but I want to point it out just uh, quickly here for those of you who may be new. The pin in scroll saw blades are like what's in the saw right here. And I'm going to release the tension off this blade and unclip the blade from the top clamp. And you can see that there's a set of pins right here. If you look at this face on, you can see the pins on the end of that blade. Okay? And those pins go in these slots up here on what we call the clamps. So you put it in the bottom clamp, which is just like the top one, only upside down. And then you clamp the blade in just by making the pins go inside those little notches. Then you can reach to the back of the saw and, and set your tension up. So pin-in blades, very easy to get into the saw. They never slip out of the clamps. Uh, they're fantastic for rough cutting uh, basic shapes. But as scroll saw artists, we generally tend to want to use plain-in blades. Now here's a plain end blade next to a pin end blade and the first obvious thing is going to be the difference in the size of the blades. We can get much much smaller blades in plain end blades than we can in pin end blades. And also the hole we have to drill to get the blade into the wood is smaller because we don't have these, the length of these pins to deal with. So we can drill much smaller entry holes to get the plain end blade in, into the saw. Those are the two primary differences and one of the main features you'll want to look for if you plan on doing fine fret work is a saw that will accept plain end blades. Now we know the difference between pin end and plain end blades. So the question is will the Win 3921 accept both types of blades? The answer is yes it will. It's set up to use the pin end blades. That's how it comes out of the box. Uh, the clamps are set up for pin end blades. They go in super simple, they're very easy to use, but they're generally just good for rough shapes. 
To use the pin end blade or the plain end blades in this saw, they give you a set of adapters. And these adapters attach to the end of the blade and they hook into these clamps, gives us the ability to use the plain end blade. We'll take a closer look at that here in a minute. A couple more features with this Win 3921. It does come with this flexible light. It's not the greatest light in the world, but it does work. The only issue that I've had with it so far is that when the shawl is running, it tends to vibrate a little bit, so you get a little bit of flicker. Uh, so I haven't made up my mind if I would use this, if I use this as my permanent saw. I might tend to just uh, push it up backwards like that and use another magnifying light or something like that. But it does have a light, and that's good. It also does come with an air blower to keep the uh, pattern line clean as you're cutting. When, it get it, when you get it out of the box, this hose won't be attached to the top up here. Uh, so when you see this hose hanging, just know that the end of the hose goes in this little spout right here on top. And then you can adjust this uh, by moving the foot clamp up and down and by rotating the little nozzle. Just mentioned the hold down foot. Hold down foot is a safety feature. It helps hold the wood down so when the blade tends to grab the wood it doesn't pop it up and make the board chatter on the table. And sometimes that'll, you know, you get your finger underneath it and it'll pinch your finger a little bit. So if you're brand new to the hobby, this hold down foot uh, might be good for you to use until you just get a little bit better feel for the saw. But in general, almost everybody takes these off simply because they get in the way. When you're doing fine fretwork especially, sometimes you want to get your fingers in here real close to where the hole is, and you can't do that with this clamp on here. So for the rest of this demonstration, I'm going to take this hold down foot off because it's just in the way. Let's talk about changing the blades or inserting the blade through another entry hole. In other words, we either need to replace the blade or we need to release one end of it and get it through our interior hole that we've drilled in the board. To do that, the first thing you do is you reach here to the back of the machine, and this is your tension and release lever, and you lift this lever up. That takes the tension off the blade and allows us to hold onto the blade, push down on this upper clamp, and that will release the blade. Then what you do is you're going to release it from the bottom also, so I'm going to take this uh, plate off of the table because it makes it easier to see. And then you got the same deal on the bottom where the blade is just hooked into a reverse clamp like this. You pull it out, you're ready to put a new blade in. Of course, if you were just going to put it into a new entry hole, you would take the blade out, put the blade through the hole, and put it back in. Then you can replace your plate, come back here to the back, you'll clamp the blade back into place, check the tension, and then you turn this adjustment knob. until you get a good tension, and then you're ready to cut. Now we're going to talk about using these adapters to use a, a plain end blade. And this is probably one of the biggest differences between an entry level scroll saw and maybe a little more advanced scroll saw. Is that blade changing and removing the blade from one clamp to put it through your entry hole is much, much easier on the higher end saws. So before we show you that procedure on this saw, let's take a look at maybe a mid-level to a high-end saw and see how that looks. We're over here at the Seiko ST21 scroll saw. This is about a $900 scroll saw. So obviously for that kind of money we expect a little more convenience and a little better quality. So let me show you what it takes to remove the blade out of this Seiko scroll saw. If we're just going to remove the blade from the top clamp so we can slide the blade through a hole, we simply take our quick tension lever, release our thumb screw, raise the upper arm, and we're ready to put the blade through the entry hole. Vice versa, if we're going to feed it from the top down, we release it from the bottom clamp, which is just like this clamp right here, only of course upside down. Then we can put our blade back in the clamp, tighten the thumb screw, put our tension back on, and we're ready to cut. If we're going to remove the blade completely, it's the same thing. We just release this tension, raise the arm up, reach underneath the table, release the tension on the knob on the bottom, there's our blade. Reverse that to put it back in. Generally when I'm putting a blade in this scroll saw, I'll put it in the top clamp first, let the blade hang down, push the blade back down through the table, reach under the table, grab that thumb screw, tighten it down against the blade, set the tension, and I'm ready to go. So that is that is the Seiko ST21. It's similar to the DeWalt DW788. 
the Pega scroll saw, the jet scroll saw, they all work a little bit differently but similar to this scroll saw. They're all very easy to change the blades. We're back over here at the wind scroll saw and we want to put this plain end blade into this scroll, uh, scroll saw so what do we have to do? This is going to look awkward when you watch me do it because I don't do this every day. I'm used to the other style. Uh, so this is going to look worse than it probably will be once you get used to it. The more often you do this, the quicker it will be and the easier it will be. So let me show you their procedure in the manual for how you do this. Again, this is not the way I'm going to end up doing it, but this is what they suggest. You remove the plate, and I did that by reaching underneath here and pushing it up. You have very little room over here because of the cover on the left side of the saw, and I'm going to show you that here in a minute. Then they suggest you take the bottom clamp, loosen the thumb screw, find the right side of your blade so you get it in there the right way, and of course you want the teeth pointing towards you. They suggest that you put the blade into the lower clamp and tighten the thumb screw down on the blade. Give it a little twist there to make it good and tight. So now we've got the, the lower clamp on the blade. They want you to take the blade, and again, there's almost no room to get your hand underneath the table. I think they're assuming that you can just drop the thing down through there and get it hooked on there. And I haven't been successful at that at all. So I reach underneath here with my finger, and all I can get in there with this cover on there is one finger. And you're going to see that I'm really going to struggle to get this thing started on the bottom. That's a thing that I think once you did it more often, you'd get better at it. So now I've got the clamp on the, the bottom holder, and I've got the blade sticking out the top. Then they suggest that you take the upper clamp, and you can see it just fell off the lower clamp. See if I can do this again. It's easier if you hold it. Now what I've been doing, and I'll show you in a minute, I've been putting a magnet down here underneath the clamp that holds this in place. And to me that makes it easier, and I'll show you that in a minute. Then the next thing in the manual is they have you to put the top clamp on, and they want you to tighten the thumb screw down, and you can see that's awkward, but they want you to tighten it down like that. Push down on the upper clamp. Oops, gotta release the tension. Push down on the upper clamp, put that in there, and then we can put the tension back on the blade, turn the knob until we adjust the tension to what we want. Now, a lot of times you won't have to release this tension, or you'll have to release it, but you won't have to turn it to loosen the tension. Um, if you get the blades in there clamped pretty good, you can leave this in the position it's at and just latch it and unlatch it to get the blade in and out. So then, of course, you would take your uh, table plate, whatever I did with it, put your table plate back on, and you're ready to start cutting. So then if you wanted to uh, just loosen the top clamp because you're going to you know, put the blade through the entry hole in the wood, you can again release, release your tension, release the thumb screw from the top, hope that you don't lose it out of the bottom, put the blade through the entry hole, holding on to it so it doesn't come off the bottom clamp. And then put the blade back in the top clamp again with the tension released. Turn the thumb screw. And then put the tension back on. And then we're ready to start cutting. Now one thing you saw there is I had a little bit of a problem putting the board, the blade through the hole because as you saw on the other saw that I showed you, this upper arm would lift up out of the way. On the Win 3921 this arm is fixed. So you have to get the board in there with everything still kind of in your way. Again, you're going to get better at that as you go. And one thing that makes it easier is a little bit of pain but to raise this blower assembly all the way up out of the way so you don't have any obstruction in your way when you're putting that board in there. And then you can loosen this and once you're ready to start cutting, put your blower back down. Another step, but again, not undoable, just takes a little bit more time. Okay, that's the method that they recommend in the book. That's not exactly how I do it. Let me uh, get this saw turned around and I'll show you what I would do. Got the saw turned around now to where you're looking at the left side of the saw, if you were facing it. And you've got this orange cover right here that is obviously there for safety. They don't want you to get your hand underneath the table and get it pinched in the lower clamp. Um, I can't tell you to take this off. I can just tell you that if I use this saw, I'm going to take this off and just take whatever risk there is of getting my hand in there. I'm hoping that I'm smart enough not to stick it down there because this thing is terribly in the way. 
to get this off, you simply loosen this screw up here in the front. You've got this blade holder cover thing that is extremely hard to open, so I wouldn't even use it. You have to put a lot of pressure on it just to get it to pop out. And that's a place to store your tools and your extra blades. Take this screw off the back and this plate will come right off. Now what that allows you to do is have access to this lower clamp. You've got all this room right now. Now again, this thing is going to move up and down when the saw is running. So you've got this piece right here, but that's what you're dealing with right there. So could you get hurt? Yeah, possibilities there, but it's, it, the, it's pretty low risk. So I, I'm going to take that off for the rest of the demonstration. I'll leave it up to you whether that's worth it to you or not. Now I'm going to show you how I change the blades on this machine. I think what I do is easier. You need to experiment with what works best for you. There's no one right way to do anything. So whatever is comfortable for you, that's what you should do. I take the lower clamp. I get my blade position to where the teeth are pointing forward and down. And with it out of the table, I put it in here and clamp it. I kind of use the edge of the table right there to give me something to hold on to. One thing that I just did, and this will be really hard to see, if that blade comes through the hole and interferes with this pin right here, you won't be able to get it lashed in. So you want the bottom of that blade to just be right at the edge of this adapter once you put it in there. So I got it in a little bit too far, so I'm going to loosen it. I'm going to pull it up until it's just out of the way of that bottom pin. And then I've got my blade in my lower clamp. Now, in the manual, they tell you to put it in here and then put the top clamp on. I don't do that. With it out of the machine, I go ahead and place the blade in the upper hole. Again, with the thumb screw right on the side of the table where I can kind of get a hold of it. I pull the blade back until the blade is just coming through the hole. Like right about there. And then I just snug the thumb screw down on the blade. Then once I get it in there kind of snug down, then I can pick it up and put a little extra tension on it. Okay, so now I've got the blade in both uh, holders right now with it out of the table. Now with this side cover off, I've got all kinds of room down here to reach underneath the table. So I can take this bottom clamp, reach underneath here, and with all the extra room I've got, I can clamp it on that bottom clamp with no problem at all. Again, with the tension undone, I can put it in the top. Much easier, much, much easier. Um, that's how I would do it. So experiment with what you would do and see what works best for you. Now, again, when we release this upper, and I've got the tension still off, when we release this upper thumb screw because we're going to put the board through a different hole, you can see I've got this deal where it tends to want to fall off the bottom clamp. Let me show you how I kind of resolve that. You're looking through the hole in the table with the table plate removed. Here you'll see the clamp that holds the pin in blade right here on top. And down here is the clamp that our adapter goes over or under to hold the plane end blades in place. So when we take this adapter and we drop it down through the table with this left side cover off, I've got plenty of room to reach my hand back behind here and clip that on the back. And then it will just kind of sit there. The problem is it doesn't sit there real well and it's easy for it to fall off. So what I do is I take a little... Uh, rare earth magnet, which I've lost. Let me grab another one. I take a little rare earth magnet. It's a half inch magnet and it's I think it's three millimeters thick and this is what I use to help hold that blade in place. So what I'll do is I'll take this magnet and down here underneath this clamp I'm going to put this magnet right there and then move it back to where it's on the downward edge of this thing right here. Then when I take the blade holder and put it back into the table, you'll see that, again, I have plenty of room to get my hand in the side here. And when I put that there, now that blade is held into place with that magnet. And it makes it much easier to get the board back over the top of the blade and get the blade back in. So a little magnet, it's not perfect, but it does help. Now with that lower holder held in place with the magnet, it's much easier to take the upper clamp, slide it down to where the blade is just coming out the top of the clamp 
oops, went a little bit too far. Tighten the thumb screw down. Again, with the tension undone, I'm going to put the blade back over its holder, put my tension back on, and I'm ready to cut. That's the way I would do it. One more thing I want to talk about about blades on this scroll saw is having the tension correct on your scroll saw blade is important. Um, you don't want them too tight, you don't want them too loose. Both of them will cause you problems. So every time you put this blade in these upper and lower clamps, uh, if you don't get them in exactly the same every time, it'll change your tension. So on this saw, once you get the blade in and you clamp your tension arm down, then you always have to check for tension and move it. If you can get very consistent in putting the blade in exactly the same place every time, it makes it easier not to have to do this as often. So if you can put that blade in until it just reaches the top and the bottom of each one of these adapters, you'll be much closer on your tension and you won't have to spend so much time trying to get it tuned in every time. We're ready to come over here to the saw now and cut a little project. And I won't show you cutting this whole project, but I'll just give you a, a, an idea of what it's like to go through and cut out some of these interior holes. I have the machine setting up here on my workbench. If I were going to use this saw permanently, I would mount it to a table uh, using bolts to make sure it's nice and secured. Just eliminate some of the vibration. This machine actually, for the price, does not have a tremendous amount of vibration. Um, I've got it on the foot switch right now, so I'm going to start the foot switch. And there is at about 50% of its speed. And you can see that's not bad at all. There's at minimum speed and at maximum speed. Now at maximum speed, it makes a little more noise. And this upper arm feels rougher for sure. But the table's still not vibrating too bad. It's, it's not unusable. But normally, I would run this saw probably at about 75% right there. Still plenty of speed to make the cut we need to make, and yet very little vibration. But again, once you've got this mounted down, it would even have less vibration. I do have the machine hooked up to a dead man style foot switch. I'm comfortable using a foot switch, so I've got this one hooked up just to make it more comfortable for me to use. So let's cut a few of these interior cuts just so you see how it works. Got the saw set at about 75%. I'm going to start it up. Here's one of the things I was talking about earlier. You see this lamp? It does vibrate pretty bad. Um, it works, but it causes a little flicker on the, on the piece. So I would probably take this lamp, just move it out of the way, and then clamp a, another light to my table. Or if you've got enough light in your shop, you can just do it that way. But that, clamp, or that light does bother me a little bit. We can begin our cut. Got to move our air blower back down in place. And the air blower does do a decent job of keeping the line clean. Need a little bit more tension. cut made. Now we'll go through the same process again. Release the tension off the back. Again, on the higher end saws, that tension lever would be right here, so the controls are up front and a little easier to use. But that's not so bad. It's just a 16-inch saw and it's not that long of a reach. Once we get the tension off, we can take our thumb screw and loosen it, pull the blade out of the piece we just cut, find another interior hole, put the blade through the interior hole, take the clamp, Get it started. Let's go right about there. Put it back over our arm. Put our tension back. Oh, that feels like it's going to be too tight. See, that's one thing that just happened. I didn't get the blade in the holder exactly the same as I had it in there the last time. So when I went to put the tension back on, as I moved this tension arm, I could feel that the tension was very high. So I'm going to turn the tension down, then clamp it into place, check my tension, 
and it's actually pretty close. I'm going to give it just a little bit more. So that's another disadvantage is the blade doesn't go in these clamps exactly the same every time and it does change your tension, which you want to be careful of. Um, I think the more you use this, the more accurate you'll get with getting the blade in the clamp and that won't be such a problem. The tension is important. There's our second interior cut done, and again, we can just proceed through all the rest of the interior cuts, then do the exterior, and we'll be good to go. What you saw here tonight was not a recommendation that you run out and buy this saw. It's just a recommendation that if you're on a tight budget and you want to get started in the hobby, this saw will get you started. Will you one day want to upgrade to a better saw? You might. You might be fine with this. It depends on the type of projects you want to cut um, and just how much you can tolerate the inconveniences of this saw, especially with the blade changing. Um, everything about this saw is usable. Again, it's just a little more difficult and inconvenient to use. The controls in the back, slight inconvenience. Uh, this lamp flopping around is an inconvenience, but I can eliminate that. Uh, the air blower, having to get it out of the way to put the blade in, to raise that up every time, or to get the board in the blade, a little bit of an inconvenience because the arm doesn't lift up. Putting the blade in, the plain end blade in, is a little bit more of an inconvenience, but I think you see, uh, with just a little practice on a process, I think you can get it to where it works pretty well. Uh, having that magnet on the lower arm, I don't know long term how that's going to work out, but short term, the amount of time I've used it, it's worked really well. It's really helped making, uh, changing the blade out a lot easier. Uh, let's see. Dust collections, I've only used it once, but it was acceptable. Dust collection on a scroll saw is usually not great. Uh, this hole up here on the top of this plate is so large uh, that it gets quite a bit of vacuum and pulls a lot of the dust down. But again, this hole being so large is a little bit of an inconvenience if you're cutting small pieces because they'll fall down through this crack or a piece of the waste will fall down halfway and get stuck in here. So most people would probably end up putting a zero clearance plate over the top of this, but won't go into that. So all in all, Decent vibration, nothing terrible, decent features, got everything you need, fair quality. I don't know how long it's going to last, you're just going to have to buy it to find out. Um, but other than that, it's a usable saw. I hope that helped you a little bit getting started in with one of these entry level saws. I'm Steve Good, we'll catch you next time here at the Scroll Saw Workshop. I won't give you my recommendation to buy it other than what you saw here today. Uh, if you think you can live with the inconveniences that it gives you, it's going to get you in the